Hey guys, Scott here in the Eastwood Garage and today I'd like to discuss plasma cutters since they are growing rapidly in popularity as the preferred cutting tool in garages across the world. I'll share some tips and tricks to keep your plasma cutter running as efficiently as possible. And while these examples today are of the Eastwood plasma cutters, they should help on most other brands since the majority of plasma cutters operate on the same similar designs across the board. Some of the technical difficulties you may stumble across with your plasma cutter are things such as arc quality. Some of these can include inconsistent arc, non-existent arc, or an arc which attempts to blow out the side of the consumables. Another symptom you may see in your work are poor cuts with excess slag or larger than normal cuts. Today, I'll cover tips in which can solve these issues in a very short time. Now, I always like to start out by looking at the consumables since these are most commonly the culprit for any of the most common concerns. Each of our machines has four replaceable consumables to check. Now let's start out by taking one apart and allow me to explain each part and how it affects the quality of the arc and the cut. First up to come off is the external nozzle, which simply threads off. And upon a close inspection, you can see very tiny air holes on the inside of these, which aid in cooling of the torch and keeping the arc in the proper direction. If these become blocked, the torch will begin to overheat with the possibility of an arc blowing out the side as it's no longer directed properly. No need to worry though, since with normal operation, these last the longest of the consumables. Just double check the air holes from time to time during long operation and before each cutting session starts. Next up is the cutting tip. This is where all the action happens and the plasma arc is forced through. Being the workhorse of the consumables, this cutting tip will be the fastest item to wear out. When checking for deterioration, simply look at the center hole. The longer you are cutting, the larger the center hole will become and possibly even elongate, allowing the arc to wander. As the hole increases, you will find your cuts become slightly less clean with more slag as the precision from the original hole size is lost, not to mention the loss in thickness cutting capability. The enlarged cutting hole can no longer support the same cutting thickness at a set amperage since the plasma arc is spread out over a larger area. An air diffuser is next up in our sequence of parts and plays a vital role in air regulation. A chip, melt, or burned air diffuser from overuse can cut vital airflow inside the torch down which will not only degrade the quality of the cut, but can also allow excess heat inside the torch, which can cause other components to wear out prematurely. Finally, we have the electrode, which depending on the model will either be a thread in or slide onto the torch. Ensure threaded versions are tight, as a loose electrode can cause an inconsistent arc. This part will be the second fastest to wear out, so we recommend having a couple spares on hand for longer cutting jobs. With consumables being the most common way to fix a plasma cutter, which is acting up, I recommend keeping one of our consumable kits handy. These will include all the necessary consumables for quick changing. And if you want the consumables to last as long as possible, we recommend supplying the plasma cutter with the driest, oil-free air possible. While each of our machines has a built-in, last chance moisture separator, you can also add inline filters prior to the plasma cutter if you live in an extremely humid environment or you plan to cut for long periods of time at a shot. If you're relying on the internal moisture separator or you're cutting for extended periods of time, we recommend purging the trap every 20 to 30 minutes. This is easily achieved by tilting the plasma cutter to access the valve with the airline still attached. I'm flipping this unit over much farther than normal to show the location of the valve. I personally just tilt the back slightly and slide a tool, such as a screwdriver, under the machine during long cutting sessions to quickly drain the moisture. For shorter cutting sessions, you can simply rely on the auto drain feature when the air pressure is removed. While on the topic of airflow, I would also like to point out that the air pressure setting for the longest consumable life. Sure, you can just set the machine at 60 PSI and cut everything from sheet metal all the way up to the machine's maximum cutting thickness. But that would erode the cutting tip much quicker than necessary if only cutting sheet metal. Using sheet metal as an example, most of our machines will cut perfectly fine at about 20 PSI and 20 amps. In the case of the VersaCut 40, you're only using half the power the machine has to offer to minimize excess wear on the consumables. Cutting style can also play a huge role in how long the consumables last. Cutting through rusty metal or overhead cutting will shorten consumable life, so you'll want to check on their condition more often. Starting the cut should be off the panel if possible to minimize hot material blowing back up at the torch as the cut begins. And if a pierce cut is to be made, we recommend starting the cut with the torch at approximately 60 degrees to allow molten metal to be blown away from the hole as it started. Then, once the hole is formed, turn the torch back to 90 degrees to allow the slag to blow through the bottom as it should. Cutting speed will factor into consumable life and post-cut cleanup. If you notice a lot of slag blowing back up at the torch and leaving a ridge on top of the cut, you'll want to slow the cutting speed down. 
And if you see a lot of slag left on the bottom of the metal being cut, you'll want to speed the cut up a little bit. It'll take a little practice, but you'll quickly discover the perfect moving speed for you and the material you're working with. The last topic for me to cover today will be the ground and how much it affects the quality of the cut. We always recommend grounding as close as possible to the area being cut, as properly grounded parts will cut 20 to 30% better, saving you time and money. With these tips and tricks, you'll be cutting in no time with the longest lasting consumables. Don't forget, if you want the chance to be featured on our social media pages, tag us anytime you post a picture of your project which used any of our products. Simply add the hashtag EastwoodCo and we'll be able to find you. For any products covered today or any tools to help you do the job right, you can click or tap the button in the corner or follow the link that appears on screen.